Hey guys, so today we are going to answer a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, I am scared scared that WebAssembly will come in take over and make JavaScript completely redundant because I am a JavaScript developer so basically the question here is will JavaScript be replaced by WebAssembly and yeah, let's get into it. Now, the, the thing that I wrote back to this specific viewer was virtually, well, I, I reversed the question a little bit because we have to consider something first and foremost. What is the fundamental question? All right. In order for WebAssembly to make it pointless to be a JavaScript developer, a few things needs to happen. You would ha and there's literally there's two things that would have to happen in order for this to to actually manifest in the way that this person is feeling a little bit of anxiety over. Because remember, if JavaScript could in th there's another case that okay, so let's say that WebAssembly becomes super super popular. Does that necessarily mean that you will lose all relevancy as a JavaScript developer? Well, no. If you think about it. There are plenty of languages that have come, gone into popularity and then kind of fallen from that popularity and there's still a lot of people who are doing it. Ruby would be one of those, for example. I mean, if you want to go on the extreme, COBOL is technically still something that you can get a job doing if you really wanted to, but Java came along and kind of made that all, well, not completely redundant, but, you know, trends go and like trends come and they go and popularity comes and goes so in order for something to be completely pointless you would have to go pretty far so let's just consider all right could WebAssembly become so popular that it becomes very very hard to become a JavaScript developer or let's just say for the sake of argument almost completely pointless of being a JavaScript developer all right so the two things that need to happen here from my perspective in order for that to happen is number one, first and foremost, WebAssembly as it stands today would have to prove that there is an enormous benefit to making the entire UI in all WebAssembly or almost all WebAssembly. Because remember, in order for it to actually become a replacement, it has to do the things that we are already doing today better. And that's the key thing. It has to do it better, a lot better not just a little bit better it has to do it a lot lot better and we are not at that point today where we have definitively no one has definitively proved that that's the case all we've proven is that there is a potential and that's the whole thing there is a potential that we could make really powerful interfaces just as because remember WebAssembly would in theory allow you to create a well native feeling a truly native feeling interface on the web and it's not just for that of course it's a compilation target guys you can use it for heavy computations and other things but we'll touch on that as well but that that is in essence the thing that would have to happen for the javascript community to be redundant you would have to have such a strong use case that you will really only use WebAssembly to make a UI and maybe some tiny bit of javascript not enough for people to actually work with it full time that's the first thing that has to happen. We have to prove that. The second thing that needs to happen is that you would have to redefine and re-educate the entire world to use or to expect WebAssembly native or at that level of quality, if you will, on the web. Remember, you cannot just say that, oh yeah, we're going to start using that and all of a sudden everybody's out of a job because the whole damn industry has to follow along. In other words, the industry and all the users who are using the web need to expect that quality. A great example is mobile device devices. There was a time when a phone was simply a means for you to make a, you know, a live call. Texting, for example, didn't even exist. Then texting comes along, becomes a part of the normal standards for a phone. People expect it as a normal standard. And now you cannot produce a phone 
or a mobile device without supporting texting because nobody would buy it because everybody expects texting to be part of the device. That's what needs to happen for WebAssembly as well. Because even if you were to make it a 50-50 split, you are not going to be out of a job because you're still going to have 50% of people, okay, some stuff is in WebAssembly, some stuff is, stuff is still in you know, the old way of doing things. That transition, I mean, as I said, it has to be a complete overhaul of the entire world's way of thinking about this is the way we do web. You have to redefine, basically redefine what the web means to most of the world. So if you think about that, if that were to happen, even if today we said, yeah, everything's going to be WebAssembly, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in work effort in order to make that happen. We're talking about most likely a process that's going to, it's going to take years to actually achieve, like even in just, if we had all of the investment today, it would take massive amounts of time. Because remember, every single company or the vast majority of companies would have to migrate their existing code bases over to WebAssembly. So now ask yourself, how feasible does this sound to you that this will happen in 10, even 20 years? Well, if we look at, the fa at history, it takes a lot longer than that for something that massive to completely make everything that used to be the way it is completely obsolete. It takes a long time. Not saying that it, it can't happen, you're saying that it's very likely that it won't happen in that way. What's more likely to happen, which is the thing that is happening today, is that there is a hype, there's a buzz around WebAssembly, web and it's very likely that WebAssembly will become a complement or something that we use in order to bridge the limitations that we have today. Because the fact of the matter is that we have to try it out first. You don't go completely over to the new thing overnight. You have to have this little in-between period where people are making small discoveries, but, you know, getting kind of used to the idea, if you will. It's a comfort period. It's very similar to uh, people getting used to using new technology overall. You can't just go from, you know, having an open fire to having terminators walking on the on the street. There's a period of time in between there where you have to show people some electric devices like some small things and then you kind of build up to you know super AIs that take over the world there's no like it doesn't go from one over to the other the same thing goes here you cannot you're not going to see an overnight overhaul of the entire way of doing web as we see as we know it today just because there's a few bloggers or there's a few people out there on the internet saying that this is going to change everything. So what I want you to take away from this is that the odds of WebAssembly becoming so massive and so successful that it takes completely over and makes JavaScript completely redundant is in, as of right now, it's a very unknown thing. It seems it's very, very unlikely. And even if something as massive as WebAssembly becomes so popular that it actually does start this trend. The process of doing that will take years. And as somebody who then, you know, if you are a JavaScript developer, I would also want to raise one finger and say this, this is the nature of your business. I understand that there is a worry, but remember, that's what you do. As a sp if you are truly a professional programmer, then it shouldn't matter whether or not you are working in JavaScript or if you're now for you realize that, oh no, if I want to do web work, I'm going to have to learn C++. That's kind of the deal. It's, uh, it's why I argue that it's very, in my opinion, a little bit alarming when somebody gets too invested into their programming language. Because the programming language, guys, it's just a way for you to solve the problem. If you are a JavaScript developer today, the problem that you are solving is what JavaScript is helping you with. But it might come to a point where someday you're not going to use JavaScript for the things that you are doing today. And then it becomes about learning a new programming language so you can solve those problems. Have a great day.